Many sections of the inland communications network of the British Post Office are microwave radio links. The aerials used are supported on masts and towers designed to meet stringent requirements. This short film gives some idea of the work involved in providing such structures. In a microwave system, radio signals are beamed across the 30 or so miles which separate adjacent stations. The specification for the towers ensures that the aerial heights are sufficient to clear intervening obstructions. While contracts department proceed to invite tenders, the engineer becomes involved in negotiations to obtain planning permission for the towers. Microwave radio stations must often be sited on high ground in remote areas, and the proposed sites are frequently located in attractive countryside. The amenities of beauty spots are carefully guarded by a number of national and local bodies, so it is not surprising that negotiations are often protracted. The arrival of the tenders from contracts department allows the work of design checking to commence. The engineer ensures that the designers of the structures have correctly interpreted the specification. The tenders are adjudicated and the order placed. Here is an example of a steel fabricator's works where an efficient layout of storage yards and workshops ensures a smooth flow of materials through the many fabricating operations. The tower components are cut and drilled to an accuracy of 1 16th of an inch. The steel members are hot and galvanized. After erection, the towers are allowed to weather for a few months, and then further protection is given by painting. By this time, this will have been bought and the start is made on setting out the tower and building foundations. A high degree of accuracy is required, so setting out is done from a baseline whose direction has been determined by solar observation. Wooden pegs indicate to the tower contractor the position of the baseline. Foundations are often in rock, and on remote sites, mechanical aids are seldom available. The first steelwork to be delivered to site is that used to reinforce the foundation block.
As the concrete is being placed, samples are taken and molded into cubes. The breaking strength of these cubes, after prescribed periods, is a measure of the strength of the foundation block. For a large microwave tower, about 100 tons of steel will be required. A great deal of trouble can be avoided if care is taken to lay out the tower components systematically at this stage. The steel director possesses a variety of skills which can be gained only by experience under difficult conditions. It is not hard to imagine the possible consequences of only a moment's carelessness when working at these heights. These structures are designed to withstand wind speeds up to 100 miles per hour and care must be taken to ensure that the tower is built exactly as specified so a continuous check is made on the contractor's progress by a work supervisor. the amount of work to be done aloft, as many sections as possible are fabricated on the ground and lifted in one piece to their final location. Horn paraboloid aerials are now being used on a large number of microwave links and the larger of the two sizes provides a lorry load 26 feet long and 14 feet wide. Transporting such a load from factory to site produces many problems. The route to be taken requires much detailed planning and the cooperation of the police. The last part of the journey is over the private road to the site. Only during the construction period do difficult loads have to be transported, so clearances are often marginal. These aerials are built to very fine tolerances, so great care is required when handling them. This is difficult with a load weighing three quarters of a ton, and a calm day, all too rare on mountain tops, is desirable for the job of lifting into position on the tower.
carefully constructed aerial systems of this type will carry hundreds of telephone calls and several television pictures with very little further attention.